What's going on guys? So while my animator is taking an extra day for The Last Jedi fanfiction, I just want to make it right for you guys. I figured I'd make this super short but sweet video covering 10 of the more unknown things about Vader's suit from Legends, and some from canon. If you guys want an updated version one day that'll be like, you know, 15-20 minutes long, then you can let me know. But for now, here's the express version. 1. Let's begin with the most reasonable, the suit's function itself. While it can be seen as a massive piece of armor, and while it definitely was, it had a much more important function. As many of you know, it allowed him to keep on living. Without the suit itself, Vader would be dead. The suit provided a wide variety of life support systems. The most important among them was the complex breathing apparatus housed in the center of his suit, giving Vader relatively free movement. His armor was made mostly of durasteel, which was also impenetrable as well. 2. Vader's suit was actually obsolete. It was intended this way. The pain that he received from everything, from the itching of the synthetic skin, to the loud respiratory sound, to all the pins and needles going into his body. These all kept him awake when he tried to sleep or do anything in general. It prevented him from keeping sane and calm, which is exactly what Sidious intended. He could have gotten a much more upgraded suit such as General Grievous' robotics, but he didn't. The more uncomfortable he was, the more angry he was, and in turn, the more filled with rage he became, fueling his dark side powers. To escape the armor's claustrophobic nature and pain, Vader had several meditation chambers that were built, in which he could remove his mask and suit and still survive. He also had back to baths where he would float around just as a torso to meditate more quietly, as we saw in Rogue One. Three. The face mask itself was probably one of the most painful but cool parts about his suit. He had a ton of displays in the lenses, which supplied him with a steady stream of data amplifying his already formidable connection to the Force. You remember that dark ending scene in Rogue One? His vision was perfect there. His lenses allowed him to see ultraviolet and infrared vision anytime he wants. We've also seen this in the canon comics. Four. Heavy shoulders. The armor was obviously heavy, however, the shoulder pieces itself were over 25 pounds in weight. It could hold up against both blaster fire and lightsabers, but there was a caveat to this. The only drawback was that the weight itself made it super difficult for Vader to raise his lightsaber to full height. Coupled with the way his robotic limbs were designed after the events of Mustafar, it prevented him from raising his arms over his head without immense difficulty. Five. So under the armor, Vader basically wore a unitard. It was this giant one-piece padded multiply body glove that covered everything below his neck. It was flexible, quilted, blast dampening, and was made of the most fireproof space technology that they could find. You could imagine bursting into flames after the high ground beat you. That would be a big fear at this point. There was also a little pocket within the suit that allowed access to the cartridge containing chemicals to lessen Vader's perception of pain in times of need and great stress. Six. Magic Gloves Darth Vader's right glove that covered his cybernetic hand was constructed using Skira Khan's indestructible Sith amulets. The gauntlets itself, both of them, were also made of a micronized Mandalorian iron weave to protect Vader against lightsaber attacks, as well as helping him deflect a direct hit from a blaster, as we saw him do against Han Solo in Empire Strikes Back, and something I hope we get to see in the new Solo movie. 7. Homeostasis Now, while the human body can upregulate temperatures or downregulate if it needs, this was also the situation with his suit. You can imagine, the suit gets very hot and sweaty. It took care of that problem. The suit was equipped with a sensitive temperature regulation system, which could be controlled by a function box on his belt. The unit was powerful enough to allow Vader to walk at the surface of Hoth, or the sands of Tatooine, without any discomfort, keeping out all the sand. 8. The Itch Vader's entire body was burned. That means that his skin was gone, as we saw in Revenge of the Sith. To fix this minor, major problem, he was given artificial skin, a type of synth skin, synthetic skin, that substituted what was seared from his bone on Mustafar. The main issue with this was that it itched incessantly, to the point that it drove him insane with discomfort, and his body needed to be periodically cleansed and scrubbed by droids of necrotic flesh. I don't even want to imagine what that smelled like. 9. Boots while his boots looked cool and combat ready, they actually had a lot of unseen purposes. The boots contained durasteel that hinged on the sides of the foot of the boot to allow him to walk. The soles also contained a ferromagnetic core which could be activated by Vader's mouth-operated controls to generate strong magnetic fields that would help him cling to starship hulls, turning him into Spider-Man, kind of, whenever he wanted. 10. Strength Leaving my favorite one for last, Vader's suit had a lot of drawbacks and pains. We know this, as I just listed. However, it gave him inhuman strength, 
With the aid of his powerful force abilities, he was an unstoppable force, pun intended. He could go as far as tweaking his mechanics in his body to give him more or less force, physically speaking. For example, in the novel The Rise of Darth Vader, he talks about tweaking his forearms and hands to the point of being able to crush the impenetrable hilt of his lightsaber. If anything were to fall on him, he'd be okay, and then press it off himself. As for lifting a human straight over his head, well, we all know that's no problem. There we go, my friends. These are the 10 facts about Vader's suit. I hope you all enjoyed these. Now, of course, there are hundreds of more facts about him and his suit in general, but I figured these would suffice for now. So let me know what your favorites are from the list, or perhaps ones that I didn't mention. And I will see you all in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. I promise you won't want to miss this one. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you always.